Hey, are you in there? Check this out. Okay, I'm just gonna back up so I'm in the image. Well, here I am. This is recorded with the DJI Spark and you're probably thinking, why the heck would you record something with a DJI Spark when you have a Mavic 2 Pro? And why would you even do a comparison? Well, I just wanna show people that uh, the Spark is actually pretty good. So I've had the Spark for since, well, since it was released, which was last year. And uh, I've been using it for all sorts of things. I take it with me when I go on trips and whatnot because it's, it's very small and it actually does well. For like a 1080p video, it's pretty good. It's very quiet. It doesn't seem to bother anybody. So it's a good all around drone. And it costs $399 as opposed to the Mavic 2 Pro, which costs $1,449. So the Mavic 2 Pro is about four times more expensive than the Spark. And uh, you know, is it four times better? All right, now I have two controllers in hand and the Spark is recording me at 1080p, but I am upscaling it to 4K because I have the Mavic 2 Pro sitting right beside it. And uh, the only settings I have on it, I've set the white balance to sunny. So everything else is on auto on the Spark. There's not a lot of settings on the Spark. Now we jump over to the Mavic 2 Pro. Here I am on the Mavic 2 Pro. Once again, the Mavic 2 Pro is in H.265 recorded at 4K, 100 megabits per second. And I have left the settings on auto, except for the white balance, which is on sunny. So here we're looking at both. I'll put the images side by side. The difference you should see immediately is that, of course, the Mavic 2 Pro being 4K, a, a real 4K, is gonna have a sharper image than the Spark because I've had to upscale the Spark image. But uh, overall, you know, how are they doing for the rest? Like, what's the color of the grass? How does that look? You know, even though I've got the white balance set the same on both of them, they should get it right, but you know, these cameras, no matter how much you pay for cameras on drones, they're so small that they're definitely not as smart as a really good mirrorless camera or a DSLR. If you buy one of those cameras, way better image and auto settings than on these cameras. These cameras are pretty basic. So they can't do a lot. They're all designed to fly in the air. They're not really designed to film me right here, this close. So I am gonna fly them in the air so you can actually see the difference. But how does it look right now? When it comes to video on the Spark, you really can't set that much. So right now on manual settings, it's on auto. I'm gonna switch it to manual right now. And I've got the ISO at 100. So it should have became a little bit darker because I have the shutter speed probably a little too high. So I'm just gonna bring the shutter speed, whoa, the wrong way. I'll bring the shutter speed down. There we go, there we go. So now the image is probably lightened up. I've got the shutter speed shooting uh, much lower. See, if I speed up the shutter speed, we'll get darker. So that's basically like losing, using your exposure value, which the Spark doesn't have. So that's all you do. Just play with the shutter, and that's just like an exposure value on the bigger drones. So I bring it down. Whoa, I've just got it too white. So anyways, let's just put it back. There we go. I've got it back on manual. Not much you can do with the Spark on that. So now I'm on the Mavic 2 Pro, and this camera is obviously designed just like the Phantom 4 Pro and the Mavic Pro before it to do an awful lot of stuff. So I'm in video mode and I'm recording on H.265. I'm on auto settings. Let me just go to what is most famous about this camera is the aperture. So if I go to the aperture, there I'm on the aperture. Whoa, is my image going all over the place? Well, it's on aperture. I could just move my dial here since I put it on aperture and I can change the aperture. Right now I'm at F4. Which way do I wanna go? I'm gonna open it wide up. So there we go. I'm at F2.8. So that's pretty much similar to like a Spark or normal Mavic on the market or a Mavic Air. They're, they're all around 2.8, F2.8. So F2.8 means I'm just gonna let in a blast of light. So what happens when I put it on 2.8 on the Mavic Pro, the shutter has to compensate. So the shutter is just going crazy. It's going super fast because you're saying, whoa, you're letting too much light into the camera. Let me bring the aperture down to its lowest. And we'll go 3.2, get it all the way down. I think it goes up to F11, which is standard on most cameras. Let's see, can I get up to F11? Yeah, so I'm at F11 and the shutter should adjust for it. F11 is mostly what you use. Like if you if you don't know anything about photography and you're flying with an f-stop, usually when the light is low, you put the f-stop lower. When you're flying on a sunny day like today and you want everything to be in focus in the distance and all over the place behind me, well, then you use an f-stop that's like f11 and it keeps everything in infinity in focus and everything should work. Well, most cameras, if you put them on f8, f8 is like prime focal point. So f8, F7, you know, that keeps everything in focus for this distance or most things you're recording. Now, before I end this segment and go flying, what I'm gonna do is just take one picture on auto settings with the white balance at sunny. And I'll show you what the image looks like and I'll do the same on the Mavic 2 Pro. So here we go.
All right, so now it's getting a little warm out here. So now we're at the point where I'm going to fly both drones. Now the Spark, unfortunately, does not have D-Log, D-Cine-like, doesn't have those camera modes. It doesn't even record in RAW. It doesn't record in 100 megabits per second. I really can't do much with the image. Uh, it just flies and has the one setting. Whereas the Mavic 2 Pro today, which we're still in September, it doesn't have a lot of settings either. However, it does have D-Log and it does have H.265. So I'm going to fly in D-Log and H.265. And you can see where I'm going with this. I'm going to color correct the Mavic 2 Pro to make it look as awesome as I think it does, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time. So I'm just going to do a, I'm going to throw a quick, quick LUT on it, or I'm just going to make sure that it's not blowing out the highs or crushing the blacks. And I'm going to do the same thing to the Spark. Now the Spark, I'm not going to have a lot of information to work with because it doesn't have any of those modes. It's got a low data rate, but I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to try to fix up the Spark image as well. So I'll fly both and I'll just switch between both and you'll see what both images look like. So if you buy a Spark, and you love the image and then you do color correction on it, you might get it to be a little bit better. All right, so here we go. All right, so my little Sparky's back there, and uh, what did you think? Did you think it did well? I actually thought the Spark did very well. And that was the point of this video. Actually, I'm gonna do several videos comparing the Mavic 2 Pro to many other drones on the market. So this is one of many to come. And I just wanted to show that the DJI Spark is a drone that a lot of people discount because they think it's a toy. Well, it's not a toy, it's an actual pro camera. Sure, it's got like a toy price because it's so inexpensive, but honestly, it has a lot of the features of the big boys. And the camera at 1080p is probably one of the better, if not the best, 1080p drone cameras on the market with a gimbal. And you saw when I upscaled that 1080p image to 4K, well, it didn't look half bad, did it? And you saw when I added some color correction to it, it looked even better. Now, when I compared the Spark image compared to the Mavic 2 Pro, if you watched it on a little tablet, a phone, or a computer like the one behind me that does not display on a big screen in 4K, you probably thought that the images of the Spark compared to the Mavic 2 Pro looked almost similar, like uh, they look pretty good. And you might even pick the Spark over the Mavic 2 Pro for a better image. However, if you watch this on a huge monitor or a pretty big monitor anyways, that is a true 4K monitor and you receive the signal in 4K, you'll see that the Spark looks pretty bad compared to the Mavic 2 Pro. So anyways, all that to say that, you know, for the most part, the Mavic 2 Pro does well, but the Spark, considering the price, does extremely well. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. I have many more videos like this one coming. As noted, I will compare the Mavic 2 Pro against many other drones on the market today, all the popular ones. And I'll do some color correction, same thing I did in this, fly at different locations, and we'll see how those drones compare to the Mavic 2 Pro. All right, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not already a subscriber, well, hit that subscribe button because I have many more videos on the way of drones and drone reviews. So uh, take care and we'll catch you in the next video.